Today we come to the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And each epistle is taken from Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Brethren, I reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory to come. That shall be revealed in us. But the expectation of the creature waiteth for the revelation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him that made it subject in hope. Because the creature also itself shall be delivered from the servitude of corruption, unto the liberty of the glory of the children of God. For we know that every creature groaneth and travaileth, travaileth in pain, even till now, and not only it, but ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of the sons of God, and the redemption of our body in Christ Jesus our Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 5. At that time, when the multitude pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake at Jesuit, and he saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And going up to, un, unto one of the ships that was Simon's, he desired him to draw back a little from the land. And sitting, he taught the multitudes out of the ship. Now when he had ceased to speak, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets. For a drought. And Simon answering said to him, Master, we have labored all the night and have taken nothing, but, thy, but at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a very great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. And they beckoned to their partners that were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they were almost sinking, which when Simon Peter saw, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was wholly astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of fishes which they had taken. And so were also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. And Jesus saith to Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And having brought their ships to land, leaving all things, they followed him. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Amen. So just a few considerations for today, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. So in, in today's bravery, we read of David and Goliath. We see in David and in Goliath the figures, figures of the church and also figures of the world. Obviously, Goliath standing for the world, the flesh, and the devil. And David standing as a, as a prototype, as, 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 a, as one that was foretelling the coming of Christ. He is one of the examples, David, <coughs> who stands for God and stands for Christ. <coughs> now, as the story goes... Goliath came out every day for 40 days and 40 nights. And he, 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 he was a Philistine. He was a giant amongst them. And he put to the Israelites a question to mock their God. And he put to them the question, whoever, whoever of you shall come and defeat me, we shall surrender our armies. But if I defeat you, you will surrender your armies to us, the Philistines. And this went on for 40 days and 40 nights. Now David, his three older brothers were, were members of the army of the Israelites, the, the, the army of Saul, King Saul. And David, being the youngest, his father sent him to check up on his 
brothers to see how they were doing, how went the battle. It was 40 days and 40 nights. It had taken a while. And when David heard Goliath tempting the army of God, blaspheming the true God, he was filled with a righteous indignation. How is it that this man has, has been able to come out every day for 40 days and 40 nights and do this to our God, to mock him, to tempt him? And so David, inspired by the Holy Ghost, took on Goliath. David, a young, a small boy. Now King Saul, who was the anointed king, fell out of the grace of God. King Saul was, was, was the ruler on earth, Christ's representative on earth in the Old Testament. And he fell from the grace of God. He fell from that position. And so God raised up another. God raised up David, a young boy. <clears throat> and it wasn't with armor and with the sword that David defeated Goliath, this giant, but rather it was with a sling and five smooth stones. When David went out to battle, King Saul first tried to arm him and protect him with his own armor, the, the, the armor of King Saul. But David, being just a small boy, was weighted down he couldn't fight, he couldn't move, so he threw off the armor. And all he had was that sling, and on his way to battle, he picked up those five smooth stones in the, in the creek that he passed over, as it is recounted in the Gospels. And, not the Gospels, but in the Old Testament. And those five stones represent the five wounds of Christ, those five wounds that, that in, in your representation in the Old Testament. And it was with that one stone that struck Goliath on the forehead, that forehead that had, that had not received the sign of the cross, that had not received God, that head that was not of God. It was that first stone, that stone that struck his forehead that took him out. And so Goliath represents the world, the flesh, and the devil. <clears throat> and it is only with Christ that we are able to defeat that. And so, in, in our day today, we see the church, who, we, we see the church in a state of confusion and in a state of decline. The church who, whose head, Pope Francis, we we must pray for, but we must also, um, we must pray for him. Pray that he converts. He is, he is the head, but like Saul, he is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And if he's not doing what God wants, God will raise up another. And so we must be ready to be that one. David did not wake up in the morning and, say, and, and said to him, he did not say to himself, today I will be the, the, the one that God chooses. No. He went about his daily duty the way he was supposed to, like normal. He was doing the will of his father. And it was in that moment that he, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, decided to take on Goliath. He didn't wake up that morning saying, I'm going to go join King Saul's army and I'm going to defeat this giant that I haven't heard about yet, because I haven't been there. No, he was doing his daily duty. And so we, today, must do our daily duty so that God may use us, if he sees fit, to use us to do his will. If it is us that he wants to raise up, let it be us. But we pray for the Holy Father's conversion. We pray for the Holy Father to do his job, we hope that he looks to King Saul, he looks to history, and sees what happened to him. He was the king.
God replaced him. So, we must pray that he realizes that he's on the wrong path. But also, us as Catholics, we must go about our daily duty as Catholics, not as Protestants or hiding our faith, right? We do not go out as a candle under a basket, but rather the candle of faith, the candle of truth, the candle of the faith. It is to shine. If you are with a co-worker, if you are with a family member, if you are with anyone for over a period, I would say, of maybe a year to be lenient, and if that person does not know you are a Catholic, there are many signs that give us away. Making the sign of the cross at, at meals, wearing a miraculous medal or a brown scapular, wearing a dress, not using vulgar language, not eating meat on Friday. There are many signs of a Catholic. And if those that are with us for a period, I would say a year, don't know that we're Catholic, we're doing something wrong. We're hiding our faith. We're not living up to our, our, our confirmation. When we were confirmed, those who have been and those who will be, we are soldiers of Christ. And as such, we must make it known. If that causes us to be martyred, good for you. It's a first class ticket to heaven. But what causes us to shy away from making the sign of the cross or, or, or doing the Catholic things? It is human respect. When we die and we all will die, who cares about human respect? Are you going to care that you can barely breathe or however you die? Are you going to care that somebody thinks that that's not cool? No, of course not. So it doesn't matter if we make the sign of the cross in public, what somebody will think. It doesn't matter. So let us be that light. Live our daily life as Catholics, as God intended us to, so that if he sees fit, he may use us as instruments. The, the, the prayer of St. Francis. It's a beautiful prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Today we're in a time of war, so we may even change that to, Lord, make me an instrument of thy holy war. But we are his instruments, and if we are... If you have a, a dull knife in the kitchen, you're not going to pick that up first. You'll pass it by for a sharp knife. If you have a, a, a drill that is missing a battery, you're going to find the one that has the battery. If you're not ready, God will pass us up. And so we must live our daily life always ready, that sharp tool, ready for combat. If we're not ready, we need to get ready. We need to become serious and take the time to be ready. We are Catholics. We are Catholics. So we must live and die as Catholics. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.